Hey everyone, it's Ivan from KeepAdster.com. Out here today to share a recent hunting adventure. I had with Jokers Wild Outdoors down on M2D Camo Properties. Earlier this year, I had traveled down to southern Idaho, meet up with Sparky from Jokers Wild Outdoors, and had an amazing hunt. Both of my boys, my oldest Jada, shot his, I guess this was his second year hunting, shot a uh, beautiful mule deer doe, and then Ira, my youngest, his first year hunting, really incredible experience that next day and next evening. Total change in weather, went from like nice and sunny to snowy, but he shot his very first big game animal, beautiful mule deer buck. Amazing experience down there. And I did not fill any of my tags because I was busy down there with my boys doing that stuff. And so fast forward, had the opportunity to go back down there. Ended up going down there and I knew Sparky had some clients who were out there hunting cow elk. So I just got into Lim High Valley. I was like, you know what? I'll go out and glass. Went out there, just kind of hanging out, glassing, my spotting scope, checking out some beautiful, there's a bunch of like antelope down there. Then panned over, I'm like, huh, what's all this brown out in the sagebrush? I'm like, there's about a dozen elk. A little bit later, I'm like, oh, there's probably like 20 elk there. And a little bit later, turns out there's like 40 or 50 elk. So I was like, hey, Sparky, I know you had a guy just come in. There's all these elk. Does he want to try and get on them? And he's like, yeah, go grab them. And so I'm like, all right, cool. So he and I ended up going out, a gentleman by the name of Terry, and went out found these elk. They had dropped down into basically this big kind of willow bottom. Incredible down there. And he went to go put a stock on them. Get after it. After he broke his shot at about 200 yards, we were like, where'd all the elk go? And we walked up, started looking, then found some blood and followed the trail. That's a relief. A real relief. Sometimes you just have the tools you have on you. So, got busy gutting that cow elk for him. With a knife that probably wasn't the best suited, especially because I didn't have my saw. Basically, between that knife and a rock, smashing through, cutting that pelvis out so I could clean everything out of that elk.
pretty cool. Like he had literally been there on property, probably not even three hours by the time he had put his cow elk down. It was already gutted and we were heading out of there to go get the mule to come back and pick it up. Pretty rad experience. So for the next couple days, I went out there searching for a nice white tail buck to fill my tag. And mule deer, I usually stick around, kind of hang out. Whitetail, arguably more elusive. Like once they see you or wind you or even think you're around, they're gone. But we'll say incredible country. Some beautiful sunrises down there to include sunsets. And yeah, definitely set up on some different spots, hoping, kind of patterning deer, hoping they would come through. And sometimes they did not, but that's hunting at the end of the day. And then I want to say maybe the morning, third day I was maybe there, went, checked one place, like as shooting light was happening half an hour before sunset, and then hung out for a while, didn't see anything. And I'm like, I'm going to go check out this willow bottom, really cool area. And I went, sat, and waited. Been down here on MTD Camo Properties down in Southern Idaho for a couple days now, out hunting, trying to get on nice white-tailed buck and there's tons of animals down here and I've definitely seen some kind of nice ones haven't been able to get on them seeing everything else too elk some beautiful big bulls all kinds of stuff down here and this morning went out early went and did my best trying to glass an area ways back and didn't find anything and I was like okay I'm gonna go try another spot and came parked was glassing down in this beautiful lush kind of like willow bottom down here and watched a bunch of uh beautiful deer kind of cruising back a bunch of does a couple fawns i think six or seven and then still sitting there glassing I've been there probably a half an hour 45 minutes and i heard something i looked down coyote i'm like oh, i'm remiss for not having my gun out so I went, got my gun, had it set up, and by then there was three of them actually, and they were just running. They were probably six, seven hundred yards by the time I was set up, having come from about three and then getting further and further. Get out of here. Go on. Come here. Come here. Hey, leave it. Sit. Good sit. Back to my story. So the coyote could not get on him. I was too slow. I didn't have my gun out, bad on me. But so there, my gun was out. And again, just enjoying the morning, brisk morning. And uh, sure enough, saw some deer come through, some white tail, a couple does, fawn, and then this big, beautiful buck. And fortunately, I was pretty much in position. So I got down. 210 yards or something like that and i know my hold in here is like 0.4 mils inside this optic and i shot unfortunately a little bit high pretty sure i ended up spining it and it dropped immediately and then i wasn't sure if i wasn't sure exactly what had happened so unfortunately i ended up having to come up and put one more shot in it to finally finish it. Did not want it to suffer unduly, but yeah, really grateful for the opportunity to get down here and hunt. And yeah, at the end of the day, get this amazing, beautiful buck, be able to put this in the freezer and feed my boys and I this coming year.
that deer did not go down the way I would have otherwise liked. Would have liked just one round through and through, done. But it didn't happen. Part of it came down to both the gun as well as the ammo. I had just basically was making a circuit. I just finished three day night vision course, went to another three days over at Thunder Ranch, and then was coming back around the bottom of Idaho to make it back home. So what did I have? I had a Knight's Armament SR25 with some M118LR. You're like, Ivan, that's a terrible bullet choice. Inhumane. I would argue, here's the paradox, right? Like, that round is used to kill people. And so you're like, you could use a better ballistic round that would maybe be more humane? Maybe. Kind of weird though, right? Thank you, Geneva Convention. At the end of the day though, was grateful to fill the freezer with that beautiful deer. And still had some more days down there, so it's time for some more adventures with Sparky. And we definitely had some adventures. One, we ended up going to check some trail cameras and also just kind of see what was out and moving around. Drove way up into the mountains on the side-by-side, -side. incredibly beautiful up there, and got into some adventures. At one point, neither of us saw it, but he managed to run over this old section of barbed wire fence and it got wrapped around one of the rear wheels. Way far up in the mountains. So we're like, how are we gonna solve this problem so that we can actually get back down because neither of us wants to walk and go get another vehicle to come back. Because we didn't necessarily have the right tools. We had a bone saw probably wasn't going to use that and then I'm like do you have any type of like wire cut or something so he pulls out probably like this dollar 99 basically little multi-tool with sure enough wire cutters on there definitely ended up cutting up my hand trying to make those things work but got us out of that situation you the man <laughs> everybody Not the right tool for the job <laughs> but it got it done <laughs> Oh, well, at least it's not flat. Always a fun time out there with Sparky. Also ended up going and looking for moose. Definitely saw some, none necessarily worth shooting because my buddy Sparky actually had a moose tag in Idaho. It's a once in a lifetime draw. So if you end up shooting a moose, you probably want it to be the one that you actually want to shoot. But ended up going through and yeah, trying to find a nice big bull moose. Some pretty beautiful game out there though. And speaking of incredible game, so much beautiful stuff out there. Whether it's giant bald eagles like perched up in trees, or opportunity to watch these hawks basically go fly and hover and eventually swoop down, grab their game. Incredible to watch. And of course, there's badgers. Honestly, I think they're incredible animals. When you have farmland, whether it's to raise stuff like grain, if you're a vegetarian, or meat, if you eat meat, they create huge, huge problems for both those industries. So down on that property, if you see them, shoot them, please, by request of the ranchers. And sure enough, there is a badger out there. Badger down. Big old badger down. I haven't put in a smack down. Look at that thing. Oh yeah. yeah. Big animal. They get some really big holes. 
big holes. I feel like I should probably make a cape out of badger fur, but then someone over on Discord suggested I make a helmet cover for my Ops Corps ballistic helmet, which I think is probably a pretty cool idea. We'll see what happens. Definitely a rad time down there with Sparky and Joker's Wild Outdoors. If you're looking at booking a hunt, and I know some of you are like, I'm gonna do it out there on public land, going for it. I think that's awesome. I will say, depending on where you are, it can be really difficult and time is finite. Honestly, I think one of the coolest things Sparky does is some of the youth hunts in that, for example, with my boys, I want them to be successful on all fronts, but especially that first time hunting. Because if you go and you go spend a week out in some deer camp or elk camp and never see game, waking up early, going to bed late, being freezing cold, eh, your kids are probably never going to want to hunt again. On the other side of that, if you go and it turns into this amazing experience where they're having a blast, yeah, you probably just created a lifelong hunter, which is really cool to be able to go out and source your own high quality protein, like sharing that experience, it's amazing. And being able to do that and be successful, so then afterwards, now that they know that it's a known good, like, or a possibility rather, like you can go be successful, then you can go spend some miserable cold mornings, cold nights out in the woods, maybe, maybe not see anything. But Joker's Wild Outdoors, all kinds of hunts, whether it's elk, archery, rifle, antelope, bear, lion, predator, deer, all of the things. Incredible property down in Idaho. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.